Welcome to another episode of the playthrough. Uh, today we're going to be talking about Root, a new game from Letter Games. Uh, as you can see behind me, we've got both the base game box and the expansion box. Uh, for those of you who haven't played the expansion or don't have the expansion, we're going to be talking about the base game in this video, and then we're going to be doing a separate video that goes over how to play with the expansion. So if you want to check that video out, you can go ahead and click the link above, or you can head on over to theplaythrough.net. And as always, for those of you who are listening via audio, head on over to theplaythrough.net to check out the videos that correspond to this particular episode. Uh, and if you already know how to play the game, you can go ahead and click the link to take you to our discussion of the video where we kind of give you our, point, our ideas and what we thought of the game. So Root is a very complicated game at first glance. Uh, so it, this is going to be a little bit of a longer video. Uh, but it's important to understand how the game works and how the different factions work in order to play. And the reason why it can be complicated is because this is an asymmetrical game. Now what that means is that every single player has a different way to get points, a different way to fight each other, and a different way to basically win the game. Uh, uh, the way that you win the game is the first person to get to 30 points, but the way that you get to 30 points is very different for every person. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over just the basics of the game and kind of the rules that apply to all of the players, and then we'll go over each of the different factions individually. So let's first talk about the board. If you look at the board here, you see that there's these different areas and with these little paths connecting them. These areas are called clearings, and they're uh, denoted by the symbols next to them and the colors. So the red ones are fox clearings, the orange ones are mouse clearings, and the yellow ones are rabbit clearings. Uh, so they're sort of like areas. So some of the factions, they use like an area control mechanic in order to get points. And so that's why those are important. Another thing that we need to talk about too is the cards. Each faction uses these cards in the game. And as you can see, there's different cards that correspond to the different clearings on the board. And then there's a fourth kind of card and they're the blue bird cards. These are wilds for pretty much every faction in the game. So they can be used as either red, orange, or yellow. Uh, and if you see here on the cards also at the bottom, sometimes they have these little symbols here with the wood behind them. This means that this, these cards can be crafted for special bonuses. Now, crafting is different, again, for all the different factions, but crafting is something that all the different factions can do. And it's very important uh, that, you, that we talk about this now a little bit, just so you know that when I talk about crafting later on, uh, you kind of understand what that means. So for instance, let's, let's look at one. So this particular crafting symbol, uh, it requires one fox in order to craft. What it does is you craft this hammer, which is out here, and it gives you two points, and then you discard the card. And there's lots of different abilities that you can craft, and we're not going to go over them all right now, but just know that crafting is very important in the game. Uh, and finally, we'll talk about movement and battle because those are pretty general throughout all the different factions. So moving, if you are able to move, what you can do is you can move any number of units that you have, any number of warriors, from one clearing to another clearing that's connected to it by a path. Uh, it's important to know that the rivers are not uh, paths for most of the factions. So if I had a movement action, for example, with the birds, I could move them here or here or here and I could move as many of them in that clearing as I want to. So let's say I move them here, and now we can talk a little bit about battle. So if I'm the birds and I'm attacking there, what you do is you take these two dice and you roll them, and then you take the higher number and you apply it to the attacker, and the lower number is applied to the defender. So if I roll a three and a two, then the three will apply to the birds, so I have enough to take out one cat, and then they would, the cats would also take out a bird. And we can talk a little bit later about how exactly battle works, um, but just know that the attacker gets the higher number, the defender gets the lower number. All right, so that's kind of the basics of the game. Let's go into each of the factions individually. And we'll go, we'll go in this order. First, we'll talk about the cats, then we'll talk about the birds, then the Woodland Alliance, and lastly, we'll talk about the Vagabond because he's just a weirdo and... No Nobody really knows what's going on with him. So we'll save him for last. All right, so the cat. So let's, I'm going to talk a little bit about the story behind Root because it kind of helps you understand the mechanics. So 
The story of Root is that the birds, the Erie dynasty, used to control the forest and they got all fat and lazy and in a moment of weakness the cats came in and they took out all the birds and kicked them out of the forest. And so that's where the game kind of picks up. So you have the cats, if you can see here on the board, they hold most of the clearings. And, and they're trying to build up their new kingdom that they just took from the birds. So when you play with the cats, what you're doing is you're essentially building a civilization. Uh, and so if you see here on the cat's board, there's three different buildings that the cats can build. You have uh, sawmills, workshops, and then recruiters. And every time you build a building with the cats, you're going to get victory points that will help you get up to the 30 victory point threshold that you need. Uh, so one other thing that applies to all the races that I forgot earlier is each one of them goes through three different phases on their turn. First is the bird song, then the daylight phase, and finally the evening phase. And every time, it doesn't matter who you're playing, you have to go through those in order. So what the cats do is during their bird song, you take one of these wood tokens and you put it on each of the sawmills. And the reason for that is that later on, during the daylight phase, you will use those wood tokens in order to build more buildings. Uh, so the, when you go to the daylight phase, the first thing you can do is you can craft and you use your workshop buildings to craft. Then you can ch take up to three of these other actions. And then you can spend bird cards, like I showed you earlier, in order to take extra actions off of this list. So the cards that the cat, the actions that the cats can take is they can battle, they can march, which means they get to take two movements, they can recruit, and that's placing warriors down where the recruiter buildings are, they can build new buildings if they control a clearing and there's an open space, such as in this clearing, they can build a building there, or they can overwork, which allows them to put more wood out on their sawmills. And then finally, during the evening phase, they draw cards depending on, and it changes depending on how many buildings they've got built and what buildings they have built. So that's the cats. The whole purpose of them, their whole purpose is to build buildings and take over clearings so that they can get more points. Because the more buildings they build, the faster they get points. <clears throat> so let's jump over here to the birds, the Erie Dynasty. Now, they're so different from the way that the cats play. So first, let's talk about their board a little bit. If you see here, these are their roosts. These are, this is the only building that the, that the birds can build. And if you see up here, there's something called the decree. So the birds are a programming race. Now, if you don't know what programming is, essentially what it is is you put cards down and then you have to resolve them in that order. And you have to resolve them perfectly or else sometimes bad things can happen. So what the, bir what the birds do is during the bird song, if you ha don't have any cards in your hand, you draw one. Then you can add one or two cards to your decree. So let's look at these cards that I showed you earlier. So let's say I put one here, a bunny card, in the recruit fit, in the recruit box. Now what this, now every turn the birds have to put at least one card down. And they can put up to two, but they have to put at least one down. So if this were my decree and I were the birds, what I would first do is I would recruit a, a bird into a rabbit clearing. As you see here, this clearing here is yellow, which matches the card, so I would put one down there. Next I would move, so again I could move any number of guys from that clearing to another clearing, and then I have one here in battle. Now because these are bird cards, they're wilds, so remember that. And then I would do battle here, and we would resolve that and see who won. If at any point during my turn I can't complete everything, so if, for instance, I had a fox card here instead, I would have to do it in order. I can't recruit in a fox clearing, so that means that my whole order gets wiped out, I get a new leader card, and don't worry about that too much right now, but there's different leaders for the birds and they do different things. And then I kind of have to start all over from scratch. I don't lose all my points, but it can hurt the birds if they end up not being able to complete their decree. So we'll come down here. So that's the bird song. And then finally, the daylight phase, you can craft, and you can craft using areas where you have roosts. And then, uh, and then you resolve the decree. So during the bird song, you place the cards, then you can craft, and then you can resolve the decree. And finally, you go to the evening where you score victory points depending on how many roosts you have out. And that's how the birds get points. They spread, 
and they build roosts, and then they score points for how many they have out. <clears throat> All right, let's go over to the Woodland Alliance. So with the cats and the birds, they're kind of these two big uh, dynasties that are fighting over the forest. What the Woodland Alliance is, is they're kind of like freedom fighters who hate both sides. And so they have their own unique uh, ways of getting points, and they're kind of a fun little theme that you add into the game. So let's go over their uh, birdsong daylight and evening right now. So first what they do is they have these little tokens on their board which are called revolt tokens. Now what these do is they allow the Woodland Alliance to gain sympathy in certain areas. So what you can do is they have these little cards here and you can pick one. So let's say we pick a fox one. You can play that and add a sympathy token into a fox clearing like that. Now what that does is if you have sympathy in a clearing, you can remove that token to take out anything that's in that area, and then you can put a fort down, which matches it. Now the way that the Woodland Alliance scores points is they, uh, they have to get their revolt tokens out, and the more revolt tokens that they get out, the more points they score. Uh, and they also have other other rules, like they, they get their warriors out, but they can also put them in here as officers, which give them more actions. Uh, they're one of the more complicated races, so we're not going to talk about everything that they do. But let's just go over their, their thing now here. So the bird song, first, what they, you can do is you can revolt, meaning you can take the tokens out of an area that has a sympathy token. You can spread sympathy, which means you can put more sympathy tokens out in areas that are touching yours. Then you go to the daylight phase and you can craft, just like the other, uh, rate, the other factions can. You can mobilize, which adds a card from your hand to your supporter stack. It's important because your supporter stack is kind of the cards you use to put sympathy tokens out. You can train, which is spend a card from your hand to place a warrior in the officer's box. And finally, during the evening phase, you can take military operations and that's where the officers come into play. However many officers you have in the box, you get to take more of these actions. And the actions are move, recruit, battle, and finally organize, which says remove a warrior and place sympathy in an area. So the more sympathy tokens you get out, the more points they're worth. And every time you put one out, you gain points. And so that's how they get up to 30. Now, finally, we'll talk about the Vagabond. He's completely different from all the other factions and his whole goal is to just become famous and so he's going out there and he's making friends and trying to become as famous as he possibly can uh, so if you see the vagabond has very different things on his board he's got these little items and if you see on the plate on the game board there's all these items up here as well so what the Vagabond is essentially trying to do is he's trying to accumulate these items because they allow him to take actions. So what we'll do first is we'll go through his phase just like everyone else, but just know that he's a lot more, there's a lot more that he can do with his actions. Oh, and quick point, there's only one faction uh, little meeple in the game. So he does, the Vagabond doesn't actually use units the way that the other ones do. So the first thing he does in the birdsong phase is he can refresh up to three items. So you can exhaust items to take actions. The first thing you can do is flip them back over, basically. Then you can slip, which means he can actually move into the forest areas or into the clearing areas. He's the only one that can go into the forest, and he can do that at the start of his turn. And that allows him to kind of refresh his items without having to, uh, without being in any danger. So if we go to the daylight phase, we'll go over kind of each of the actions he can take and the items that he needs in order to take those actions. So the first is move. So he can move, but not into a forest. He can move from clearing to clearing by exhausting boots. He can battle by exhausting swords, which are these. He can explore, uh, which is diving into these little ruins and finding more items. And he can do that with torches. He can flip over any item in order to aid. This is giving cards to other players. So when you give cards to other players, it bumps you up this relationship track and you get more points if you have good relations with the other, uh, the other factions. 
You can quest, so he's got his own little unique quests that he can complete. And this can get you either victory points or more cards so that you can do more things. Uh, he can use a crossbow to strike, which means you just take out enemy pieces. He can use hammers to repair or craft his items. So if the Vagabond ever gets attacked, his items can get damaged and then he has to repair them. And, and that's, that's all, the, all the things that he can do during the daylight phase. So then we go to the evening phase. Now what, the evening, what he does in the evening phase is first, he, uh, it's an evening's rest. So if he's in the forest, he automatically repairs all of his items. If not, then you just skip that one. Next, you draw a card, plus one for every coin stack that you have. So he's got a coin here, so he would draw two cards. Then you have to discard down to five cards. And then finally, you have, to, you have a limit on how many items you can carry as the Vagabond. And it's six, uh, but if you have any of these little bag items, then it increases it by two. And so the Vagabond is very interesting because the way that he gets points can change. He can be friendly with other factions and he can get points by giving cards to them, or he can be aggressive and he can get points by taking out enemy warriors. And there's a bunch of different types of Vagabond characters. So there's the Vagrant, the Thief, the Tinkerer, the Ranger, and so on. So when the Vagabond player picks, they have to pick one of those and they get different starting items and stuff. And that's essentially the game of Root. That's how you play the base game. Uh, we hope that this helped you out and again remember to uh, go ahead and click the box above in order to be taken to our discussion video uh, if you want to know how to play with the expansion stay tuned and we'll show you how and that's how you play root thanks for joining us uh, make sure you head on over to the playthrough.net to check out our other content and stay tuned for the discussion portion of this video